All right, folks, I'm Nick Hawks. This is a Weather XM update. This is something a little bit new. I'm here with the Monos from Weather XM. And I'm uh, super pleased to be announcing that I'll be the interim community manager, which is why I'm running this thing. Monos, super good to see you, man. Hello. Hi. Psyched to have you on board. So I'm coming in to fill this interim uh, community manager slot. Um, we're not sure kind of where it's going to go. Could be something that I do for a long time. Could be something where we find someone who's much better at it and we bring them in. But it's been uh, really an honor to, to have you guys say like, hey, let's let's try this out after Lydia left. So thanks so much for at least starting this off. Yeah, thank you as well. Um, so for for the audience here, I know Nick for a few years now. Uh, he was in the Helium ecosystem um, well, more than a few years ago. Well, well 2021, he was voted, voted Community Manager of the Year, Community Member of the Year. And I know that he has helped a lot of people uh, in the Helium ecosystem to understand um, what was going on and how to maximize their opportunities there with um, rolling out the network. So I'm really glad that uh, Nick has joined our team. Um, he was an early alpha tester in, in, in WeatherXM. He has provided feedback to us uh, while we were building the, the first version of the product. I know he's a paraglider and he uses weather all, all the time. And so I'm really happy that we have you with us, Nick. I'm excited to be on board. I've always loved Weather XM. I've always thought this is a really cool project and I'm, I'm excited to kind of see a little bit both behind the curtain and to dive, have a good reason to dive deeper into the community. Um, okay, so we got three things that we wanted to hit today really quickly as part of this. Uh, that is the expected launch of mainnet, the 4G station, and the new website. Let's start with the expected launch of mainnet. What's going on right there? And just give me like a, an overview. We don't need to jump deep into the details. Yeah, okay. I have so much details to share, but yeah, let's do a separate session for that. So so we are trying our best to keep our promise uh, for the token launch in Q4, uh, but there are so many things that are happening at the same time. So we have, we have a huge list of um, features that we need to implement on, on the product side. And there's stuff like um, we have a completely new reward mechanism that takes into account the quality of data, the location of the cell, uh, some new fancy scientific uh, papers that we released um, uh, over the last few months. And this new mechanism will require a lot of modifications to the front end, to the user interface, uh, so people can claim the rewards. So they, we're changing a lot of things there. That's why it's taking so long um, for you guys, for the community to see what we're working on. At the same time, we have to uh, finalize the airdrop calculations, uh, the, um, the vesting schedule for the DAO, for the company, for... Uh, for the tokenomics in general that we're working. We, we've done the security audits on the contracts, but that's only a small detail in, in the huge list that we have um, to execute uh, in, the, in the next couple of weeks, basically. At the same time, we have a lot of legal uh, work to do because we're trying our best to, um, you know, to bring as much compatibility as possible uh, with, the traditional world. So uh, that's why our company is based in Switzerland. Uh, so we have a long list of, uh, of legal actions there in order to uh, give as much as possible the, um, you, you know, the, the, the legal requirements basically of Switzerland to our token. Uh, that will simplify, that will make it easier for our token to be listed in top exchanges basically. And that's one of the reasons why we do this. So, yeah, and, and in this and in, in that area, let's say, uh, there is a number of things that does not depend exactly on us. So we are already, we have very good offers from uh, very uh, um, uh, famous market makers. Um, and we are collaborating, uh, negotiating with, with top 10 um, centralized exchanges for the listing. But... But the last part takes time. So it will take more than a month, basically. I, I, I assume it will take more than a month uh, for them to finalize their due diligence because we're going back and forth with the legal stuff as well yep. um, in order to fix 
uh, the decision or where, what exchanges we're going to list our token first. We're going to do the token. Got um, it. So sounds like at the, like the basic level, we're probably going to come either hit it or come pretty close to the end of Q4 for the, the core functionality. So the thing will work. Um, but there are these extra things that are important to the community, but are not kind of the core functionality, like a listing on a central exchange that may come a little bit after Q4 and that's out of your control is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So to, to maximize, you know, the, the success of the project, we think that when we do the token launch, when we start giving the rewards on mainnet, we should be on an exchange at the same time. Um, and it's not only that we have a, a, a long list of other features, uh, that we call them nice to have. It's not mandatory, but I, we think you know it, it. It will benefit the project the most if we have um, our billing system, uh, for example, uh, in operation. The billing that relates to the DAO. Um, so in the next few months, essentially, we're splitting some parts that the company was doing. We're giving them. We're handing it over to uh, a new entity, an association that will be the legal wrapper of the DAO. And uh, the token essentially will come out from, from there. So that new entity needs to have a billing system that uh, people can buy the licenses for the data in the native token. And um, at the same time, we want to provide uh, a number of other additional mechanisms that are related with um, validation of the rewards. So anybody can um, confirm basically that the, the rewards that were given on an individual station were correctly calculated. And yeah. to do this, you, we need to use uh, computer and data, decentralized technologies to do the computation properly. Uh, yep. That's why we're using Filecoin as well to store our data there. So yeah, so there's a lot of things that we think are, they will super optimize the, the results of our project if we have them before token launch. But we are not going to wait forever um, for all these things to materialize. So we hope that we will have the the, the bare minimum, or or you know the, the core elements. We will have them in Q4, and then yep. depending on market conditions, we will decide if we're going to launch in 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 Q4 or very early next year. Um, um, cool. I'm optimistic that we're going to do it in December. I like it. I like, I mean, one of the things I've always liked about projects that are, are just more conservative and saying like, look, it is more important for us to get it right than to get it done now. And sometimes in, in business and in small business, it's more important to get it done now and then figure it out later. But token generation event is not one of those things. We don't want to, you know, get it out there and then be like, oh, actually, we're just going to change a couple things and go back on it. So I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are not only being open about kind of what's happening and what the expectation is and what the goal is, but also saying like, look, it is far more important to us to get this thing right uh, than to get it done right now. So, okay, um, let's talk about this 4G station that's coming down the pipe. This just got announced on Discord. Uh, what's what's going on with that thing? That's a little bit more in your control. <laughs> yeah, so we have been working on a 4G hardware actually for forever. We we were that was one of the first devices that we started working with, but it yep. never surfaced as a product because it was too complex. And we went back to the Wi-Fi version. Then we worked on the LoRa one, and we decided to keep the 4G, the cellular version for for last. And in a yep. way, this completes the typical weather stations that we're uh, developing because. We are working on some exotic ones that are, that are using satellite communications, but that's for later on because the infrastructure is not there yet. Um, so yeah, so the 4G is almost ready. I mean, as a hardware is ready and we have okay. been testing it uh, for, for a few months now. We're finalizing- and That's not the station itself, right? That's just like the yeah. kind of brain of it. And the station itself is the thing behind you, right? Yeah, so this is the gateway and Got we it. have designed this so this is similar in to with the M5 stack where it was acting as a gateway and we were using the external outdoor sensors uh, that were uh, connected to the gateway. So same style here, this is acting as a gateway. We can connect the typical uh, sensors that we already use, which are not so typical because we have done some heavy modifications on the firmware. So the plastics and the, and, you know, the, the mechanical parts are, are the same but the firmware internally is completely different. Um, we've moved the GPS there. We have another GPS here. There's a lot of 
things um, hidden or not so hidden under the hood here in the hardware. And also this hardware has been designed to be compatible with at least three or four different uh, external sensors. So we are nice. starting with the, the one we already know, but it will evolve because um, we have customers that have asked um, for solid state sensors, basically, so they can measure precipitation, uh, snow precipitation, yeah. uh, or they, you know, more robust, more industrial devices. So this is a hardware that was designed for, for professional customers in mind. So it's not, um, obviously anybody can purchase this and, and deploy it instead of a Wi-Fi or a LoRaWAN version in, yep. in areas that make sense. But the, the use cases that we had in mind when we were working on this are use cases that make more sense to, um, to companies like, you know, in agriculture, agri-tech companies that want to deploy this in, in fields and, yep. and they want to streamline the deployment of those and, and have it as easy as possible. Got it. So this is more of like a B2B product versus the B2C stuff that you've sold so far. Okay. Correct. Correct. Very cool. And I think we were talking, there's, there's going to be at least two uh, SIM cards in there. One is kind of a global fallback that works pretty much everywhere, but there's always local tuning that you can do. So that's going to be a second SIM card. And if you're kind of a, a tech savvy user, you can change that. If you're not, then it'll just come pre-planned, but it's much more focused to like, Hey, we're selling these to businesses, not really to, to individuals, although individuals can buy them if they want. Yeah. What are we looking at kind of price point and maybe delivery dates as a general idea for that thing? So this is going to be, we're trying to, to have it as competitive priced as possible. So it's going to be less than a thousand K, a thousand, sorry, a thousand dollars, less than one K. So, um, and we're just trying... super competitive. Yeah. That's, that's great yeah. for a B2B yeah. thing. So I mean, I've, I've bought things that are 1700. So, so yeah, so this is, this is all in one. So it has the, again, communication, energy, solar panel, um, the, the, the whole, the, the front here is the solar panel. So it has the advantage that you don't need to add additional, uh, accessories yeah. to make it work. Uh, it's super it's low power and at this price range. We're trying to be, to, you know, to deliver it as a, um, turnkey solution in a way. So, uh, it supports two SIM cards, but we're going to provide both of those SIM cards and we're going to make sure that for whatever country we're shipping at um, roaming and everything is going to work smoothly without the user having to do anything or to pay the, the SIM card bill. Um, yeah. And I'm really excited about this hardware because okay. it unlocks a lot of opportunities. Okay. Rad. And then the last thing that I've got for uh, today's update is we've got a new website for weather XM. Uh, I know on the community side, maybe the only thing that they see that's new is the color, but under the hood, there's a, there's a ton going on. Tell me uh, what you guys are excited about. So, yeah. So we have been working on this for some time now, but again, it has, it has a lot of internal uh, optimizations like uh, uh, we have integrated it with an affiliate program. Uh, we support crypto payments. Uh, we have integration with our ERP tools so we can track are five warehouses around the, uh, the globe um, for stock and for spare parts. There were a, a lot of things that the community was asking from the eShop's point of view that they were kind of tricky for us to deliver. So that's why we had to do this whole refactoring. And by the way, we refreshed the, the branding as well. Awesome. Love it. Love to see it. It's like you're pulling up to the same car on the race line. The, uh, the shell looks pretty much the same, but there's a lot going on that that's uh, going to make this thing a lot faster, more capable. So super cool. Manos, thanks so much for making time to come on. I know you're really busy. This is your evening. It's my morning. Today's uh, October 24th. So we'll get this thing out as fast as we can. But uh, thanks so much for coming on and keeping the community updated. Thank you, Nick, as well. Thank you for joining our team. And I'm looking forward to these discussions.